Q&A part two for you guys. You're gonna be watching some footage from my recent bench press session, which is 285 pounds uh, for five sets of three reps. And you're also gonna see some clips from my arm and shoulder workout. So let's go ahead and get started. I got almost 600 questions on my Instagram post, which is absolutely insane. So thank you guys for wanting to participate and supporting. And here we go. Who got you into fitness? Um, I had a friend who was, I used to be in a band, he used to play guitar. Uh, and he was actually the other guitar player. I remember we were like, he was older. He was like 16 and I was 14. And uh, he had a six pack and he was like in shape. And I thought he was like super ripped and everything. And he worked out at this training camp. And so he's like, yeah, you should come check it out. So I checked it out and I started my very first day. It was the first day of high school. So my freshman year, 14 years old, and got hooked ever since. So my friend Jordan is the guy who got me into fitness. Let me see. Do you know your next location for your gym? Uh, not yet, guys. I'm currently looking. I'm going to be doing a lot of vlogs and everything, taking you guys through every single step and process of moving and upgrading. So I'm currently in the process of just looking for new equipment. Not new used equipment, but um, top quality brands so I can store them. And when I find deals, I'm just purchasing them so I can get ready for the move. Uh, I really want to take the gym to the next level. And currently, my place is 1,500 square feet with 900 square feet of warehouse space. So I'm really looking to get about 2,500 to 3,000 square foot of just warehouse space. Uh, that's kind of the goal. So looking for that and um, I'll definitely keep you guys posted. But the move is in December. That's when my lease ends at my current place. So uh, it's gonna be, it's not like I'm gonna be pushing this back forever. So next question. Collab with Max Tuning anytime soon? Uh, yeah, we, we're honestly, he's probably one of my best friends on YouTube. We're talking about uh, him coming to Texas pretty soon. So go comment on his videos. Tell him to come to Texas. We'll get a collab going. Will you ever do a Draw My Life? I think that'd be really fun. Uh, if I do that, I'd probably do it on my vlogging channel. So be sure you go subscribe to that uh, vlogging channel. Links in the description box. Uh, yeah, click on that. Go subscribe. And that's kind of where I do those more type of videos. Uh, and yeah, next question. Uh, just going through Instagram here, guys. Do you think that training splits, such as one body part a day or push pull splits, have an impact on building mass? Um, I think I already answered this, but I think working everything about two times a week is kind of like the sweet spot. Um, protein synthesis takes 26 to 48 hours uh, to complete the process of it. So um, if you're working one muscle and just, I think I already answered this in my last video, so I'm not going to go into it. But um, I think that training more frequently is a little bit more beneficial with a little bit less volume. So, Next question. Do you think training in the morning is a bad idea? Not at all. Um, it's real, Training is really preference, guys. I mean, there's guys that can train at 4.30 a.m., 5 a.m., and there's guys that are weak as hell at 5 a.m. Um, and like training at night. Personally, I like training later on in the day. I like having a lot of food in me. I just feel stronger. Um, but there was a time in my life where I was working out at uh, 5.45 a.m., every single morning. So um, it's really kind of depends on my scheduling and what I'm doing um, as far as like where my life is at, you know, but there's nothing wrong with working out at any time. And if you're training that early, I would probably think you would train fasted unless you wanted to have a small little breakfast, but there's nothing wrong with training fasted either. Uh, next question. Should I train during Ramadan? Yes, of course. Um, did you always feel this supported with what you do? Do you always feel this good about everything, especially your fitness journey? Was it always this fun, or is it only now that it's like this because because of your status? Um, I've always, always enjoyed, and I've always had support in what I've done, um, whether it be you know 50 subscribers or 100 subscribers or um, just people encouraging me, and I'm very thankful for that. Um, was it always this fun? I always enjoyed my videos. I always loved having this YouTube channel and just, I feel like now that it's a little bit larger of a channel, I, everything's the exact same. Videos are the same. I feel like I'm trying to keep content the same and the only difference is I'm reaching out to more people, which is my goal, so, um, yeah. Next question. How did you get in contact with Gymshark? I actually contacted them, guys. Um, sent them an email, sent them my stats. And I believe I had to send two emails. And ever since then, um, we've been together, sponsored by Gymshark. So um, it's all about social media, sponsorships. And I know I answered that as well in my last Q&A. How did you attract people to your YouTube channel? Um, I would say be sure you're putting out quality content and have something unique about yourself, whether it be you know, you're motivational, you're strong, you're, uh, 
you know, entertaining anything, uh, funny, just something that's unique about yourself. So and be the best you that you can be. Don't try to emulate someone else. Just be you, you know, don't try to copy people's videos and do the same exact type of vlogs and take notes and try to copy them. Like exactly. Just do your own thing and uh, people will like it. So next question. next question. What's the best way to build your chest slash what exercise for chest gains? Um, as far as chest development goes, I would say pick about two pressing movements, uh, about one or two flies and focus on getting really good at them over time. Uh, I really emphasize perfecting your form, getting stronger, adding weight over time, and then you're going to see the best results. And be sure you're in a caloric surplus as well. Um, next question. I get this one a lot, guys, whether it be on Instagram or on my videos or everything. So did you work and save for every piece of gym equipment slash how much have your parents helped you financially to get you where you are? I have not had financial help from my parents, guys, in a, a long time um, since I turned 20 years old. So if you see you know, my Stairmaster or my car or my dumbbells or my leg extension, everything has been funded by me um, personally. So yeah, I have a lot of pride in what I do and I'm very thankful to have opportunities to create the income that's necessary to pursue my dreams. So, And I have you guys to thank, um, it's due to your support that I'm able to do things like that. So. Uh, next question, the best way to bench more and the best way to bring up lagging body parts. I'm really going to answer the best way to bring up lagging body parts. Number one tip is going to be train it more frequently. So if your biceps are lagging, train them two, three times a week. If your shoulders are lagging, train them two, th two or three times a week. Increase your uh, frequency and mess around with your volume and mess around with your volume. Kind of find that sweet spot to where you're training enough and you're kind of prioritizing them. So next question. Will leg workout stunt growth? No, not at all. Uh, how many cheat days do you have generally in a month? Uh, if I'm cutting, uh, and this cheat days really just kind of go, I guess, when you're cutting, but um, if you're counting your macros, just try to fit things in. Um, I would say 85, 15 split of, you know, really micronutrient dense foods and then kind of whatever you want. But the lower calorie you get, the harder it does get to fit things in. So I would say, Personally, I, if I'm not having a refeed, I just like having a cheat meal. Um, it's If I'm not competing or anything, it's just a little bit less serious, a little bit less uh, stressful, and you can just kind of be a human and not worry for like, you know, a, a dinner or something. So I would say once every two weeks or so. I definitely don't recommend having a full-blown cheat day, especially people that do it like once a week. I would say one cheat meal every week and a half or two uh, would be fine. So let's see. It doesn't mean like, just think about it this way, guys. If you, there's nothing like super, super magical about cheat meals and refeeds. They're gonna raise your leptin levels, and it's just some people overdo it, way, way, way overdo it. So, um, and kind of take you know two steps forward and then take a step and a half back, as opposed to taking two steps forward, maybe a little step, you know, a quarter of a step back, and then continue moving forward. So, keep it under control. And I think refeeds are optimal if you're gonna be doing cheats, but I totally understand people that want to do um, cheat meals as opposed to refeeds sometimes. So. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe and ChristianGizmon.com, online training and apparel. So I'll see you guys in the next video.